The first time I was prescribed with topical steroids, I was just three years old. How often did you use steroids? I was having this crazy itch attack on my arms. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Remy and I'm currently going through something called TSW, which is short for topical steroid withdrawal. In this video, I'm going to do a Q&A because I've been getting a lot of questions on TikTok, YouTube, Instagram. So I gathered some of the commonly asked questions. So I'm gonna be answering them here. I printed them off. Okay, so a little bit of background on myself. I had eczema as a kid and the first time I was prescribed with topical steroids was when I was just three years old. Now, I don't remember it, obviously, because I was a little kid, but I spoke to my mom about it and she reckons that I was about three. I lived in Japan back in the days and we would go visit the dermatologist and the doctor would prescribe me with steroids. And he advised to use it day and night, every day, until I guess the eczema goes away which it never really does completely because steroids just suppresses the eczema and it's not like fixing the root cause so once you stop using it it comes back again so it's like an endless cycle so we would go back to see the doctor again once we finished using the tube of steroids and he would just re-prescribe me with more and the years went on and i moved to Australia when I was seven years old. I still had eczema, so we would see a different dermatologist and we would obviously tell them about what we've been using and how my skin's been doing and all that, and like what kind of steroids we've been using and for how long. And they would just be like, yep, yeah, just continue using them. Um, and they will prescribe me with more steroids. And over the years, my body would build tolerance to the steroid cream. So then they would prescribe me with a stronger steroid. The thing about steroids is that it it seems like it's working because it suppresses the um, symptoms. So I was like happy with that and I didn't know any other strategies. So I would just use them and my mom as well like she obviously believed what the doctors would say and i don't blame her for any of this because she was just doing what any other caring mom would do so anyways so from there i was on topical steroids for a long time it was just until last year that i had stopped using them well reduced the use of it which is crazy. I only stopped using them this year. So I used steroid creams for over 20 years. The reason why I stopped using them was because um, end of last year, around November, I came across a video of a girl going through TSW. And that was my first encounter with TSW. I had not heard of it before. And I'm so glad that I came across it. And as I was watching it, my skin was clear. Like all my high school years, my skin was pretty clear. It was well managed by the steroids. I was just suppressing it obviously, but I thought my eczema was healed. And watching that video, I didn't relate to it. Like it didn't seem like it was my kind of problem. So I was just like, oh, poor girl going through such debilitating skin disease or whatever and I didn't think much of it I was like no it's, I've got nothing to do with that but obviously I knew I was using steroids so from watching that video I realized how bad steroids are to the body so I decided to stop using it but I didn't think I was going to go through TSW I thought my body was going to cope well with that but I was wrong and after four days of stopping it, so I just stopped cold turkey and after four days, my body was covered in rashes. It just, I had rashes on my stomach, my back, crept up to my neck and my face 
and I was in disbelief and I just felt miserable. I had flashbacks of um, my primary school years when I had really bad eczema and I couldn't stand it. So I went back to using topical steroids on the fourth night. But around that time, a thought came to me and it was, what's going to happen when I fall pregnant in the near future and have to stop using steroids for nine months? If I'm experiencing this much of a withdrawal on the fourth day, I just couldn't imagine having to go through it for nine months and being pregnant. So in that moment, I decided that I want to get it over and done with before life happens and I made a plan to taper off the steroids after like Christmas and New Year's was over so um, I did that in mid-Jan of 2022 so just this year and I referred to a website called how to safely withdraw from topical steroids and I followed their guideline the day I completely stopped using steroids was when I started no moisture treatment. That leads me on to why I started no moisture treatment. I knew about the treatment before, like when I started topical steroid withdrawal, because I noticed that a lot of people going through TSW take the no moisture treatment path. and But I always thought it wasn't for me because I found moisturizing so soothing for me and also like showers as well so i just thought it might work for other people but i don't think it's for me but one day i was having this crazy itch attack on my arms it was so so itchy like words can't express how itchy they were i w i felt like my mind was going crazy because i was trying not to scratch and they were so itchy and then um i put moisturizers on trying to like make the itch go away but it did the opposite and it was just like burning and itchy at the same time so i hopped in a cold shower and when i came out of the shower i didn't it's making me itchy thinking about that time anyway so when i got out of the shower i decided not to moisturize because I just had a gut feeling that that was a smarter thing to do because my skin got really calm in the shower, in the cold shower and I didn't want to slab moisturizers on again and trigger that itch. So then from that day, um, I stopped using moisturizers and it worked. So that itch went away and overall, um, I've been doing no moisture treatment for three months now and I can say that the itch has gone down by like 60 even 70 percent compared to pre-NMT days honestly like it was one of the best decisions I made another reason why I do no moisture treatment I jotted down some notes I'm just gonna okay so no moisture treatment is a regimen formulated by a Japanese doctor called Dr. Kenji Sato and his theory is that the skin affected by TSW needs to dry out and reducing moisture will speed up the process of, of TSW. If you're interested, search up Dr. Kenji Sato and no moisture treatment on Google and it should come up. But what works for me may or may not work for you. So just see, listen to your body um, and do what's best for you. Okay, so that was my background. Okay, so I've got a few questions. How often did you use steroids? So I used it for over 20 years and during my childhood years, I would use them pretty much every single day, morning and night. And um, during my high school years and the last few years, I was using them probably twice or three times a week, um, just um, at night. So once a day for like two, three times a week, depending on how my skin was. I didn't have a full week of not using them for 
the past 20 years. My daughter has pretty bad eczema and we have prescription steroid creams for her. How would you recommend we avoid her having issues in the future? Okay, so eczema has a root cause. Everyone has a different root cause. So you need to be figuring out what it is that's causing your eczema to flare up because using steroid creams is just suppressing the symptoms. So it's not actually fixing the root cause. If you do you get what I mean? So my root cause of my eczema is a leaky gut. And what I need to be doing for that is to feed the good bacteria in my gut and reduce the bad bacteria that's overtaking the good bacteria. So everyone has a different root cause and the way to figure this out is to work with a nutritionist, more specifically with a functional nutritionist that specializes in eczema. And I worked with my nutritionist to find out my root cause and she's been helping me to um, improve my gut health, suggesting what to eat, what not to eat, what supplements to take, what to do, what not to do, that sort of thing. So there's always a natural approach to eczema. I suggest find reaching out to a functional nutritionist and yeah, go from there before you put steroids on your daughter because your daughter will be in risk of TSW and people can go through TSW even after two weeks of applying topical steroids so you just, you got to be really careful with that um thanks for sharing this can I ask which steroid cream you used to use um I used a lot of different steroid creams over the years and the I don't remember all of them, but the ones I can remember off the top of my head um, would be like Avantin, Diprazone. There's heaps more, but I can't remember. Maybe I'll pop them here if I do remember them. Um, if you have an infection going on with your skin, you might, I was talking to my nutritionist the other day about this as well. She said, if you have an infection, the first thing you want to try is a, an antimicrobial. So something like a tea tree oil to topically put on the infected area. If that doesn't work, manuka honey. So you put manuka honey on the area, the infected area. If that doesn't work, then use topical antibiotics. And if that doesn't work, the last thing you want to try is... Um, a prescribed antibiotics um, to to take to orally take so um, the reason for that is that antibiotics kill all the good and the bad bacteria in your guts so you do want to kill the bad bacteria but you don't want to kill the good so that's the natural approach to it so I guess it's worth a try before you take the antibiotics what do you do when it starts to get really itchy? Like, do you have any methods to stop yourself from scratching? Um, I would love to know that as well, but I do have a few tricks of my own. Number one, knowing what triggers your itch is really important. And I know that refined sugar really triggers the itch. Um, and I didn't notice this until I started clearing out my diet. I could really tell that if I had like a sugary food one day out of the whole week, I could tell that that was triggering the itch because I would get so itchy that night. And it was really interesting to pinpoint what was triggering the itch. So try and clear out your diet and reintroduce some things and see what's triggering your itch. Reducing that helped me reduce the itch but tsw is just so different from eczema it's something it's, it's another thing to deal with and tsw comes with itchiness so it's hard to control that with food and stuff but if you can control the itch that's caused from food then i guess it doesn't go on top of the tsw itch so it's better another thing is to get your nails done. I get 
SNS. I do my own nails, but I do SNS and then top it off with gel. But you can get acrylics done. So what happens is that the tip of the nails get round because it's coated by the gel and you can't scratch off your skin. So even if I scratch my skin, the skin doesn't break off as much as it would if it was just my normal nails. So I know a lot of TSW and eczema sufferers get their nails done for that reason. I find them better than having um, natural short nails because you can still scratch even if you have short nails. So I like to have my nails done and they're really cute. So um, that's my second um, method. And my third method would be um, wrapping my arms with bandages at night so that I can't get to the itch um, and that's been really really helpful I used to wake up with really bad um, scratches and like weepy bloody skin in the mornings but since I started bandaging my arms they have improved a lot my arms are the area that gets the most itchy out of my whole body so I still do fight with the itch, but that's something I do. And also breath work is another really good method. Okay, so breath work is like being really mindful of how you breathe and you and there's lots of different types of breath work, but what it does is that a lot of the times the itchiness comes from the stress and how your body reacts to the stress so when your body gets itchy your body is usually in a fight or flight mode so you want to bring that down to rest and digest so, and how you do that is through breath work you can search it up on youtube like different types of breath work but one of the ones i like to do is butterfly taps and deep breathe in deep breathe out so it'll look like this. It really helps make the itch go away. And for it to work, you want to be doing it frequently. So you want to be practicing it every day ideally i do it before i go to sleep so that when you really need to use this to reduce the itch your body is trained to do it so it knows to like switch it back down to rest and digest please share the food and drinks that you can eat you also want to be eating a lot of onion and garlic and i feel safe on my platforms everything that you come across in life has a life lesson